thanks for staying with us. The world of the internet has brought with it so many advantages, no doubt, especially to small businesses. But on the other hand, it has also created a new tool for criminals. Cybersecurity issues are becoming a day-to-day -day struggle for businesses. Recent trends and cybersecurity statistics reveal a huge increase in hacked and breached data from sources that are increasingly commonplace um, in the workplace, like mobile phones, laptops. In addition, COVID-19 has ramped up remote workforces, making inroads for cyber attacks even easier. Most companies have unprotected data and poor cybersecurity practices in place, making them vulnerable to data loss. Individuals are not left out, as information shared online can lead attackers straight to your door. To successfully fight against malicious intent, it is imperative that individuals and businesses make cybersecurity awareness and prevention a part of their culture. Today, we will be discussing security with focus on safety, safe social networking practices. And to discuss this with us is Confidence Stavely, a cybersecurity professional, cybersecurity awareness advocate, global shaper, author and entrepreneur with over a decade's worth of experience in technology. Her wealth of experience garnered across diverse sectors, including consulting, education, banking, and government, has distinguished her as a leading female voice in the African technological space. Confidence the top 50 women in cybersecurity Af Africa 2020 finalists, young chief information security officer of the year award 2021, winner, BBC Business 100 expert and an external faculty for the FinTech Institute, Lagos, London and Toronto. She authored Africans first storified cyber security awareness book, No Go Fall Maga, the handbook. Please uh, welcome Confidence to the show, but before that, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with a hashtag WayShow or SMS or WhatsApp to 0810838 Welcome, Confidence. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we're so happy to, to see that you got our memo. Ah, I can say. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You got our memo. Yeah. Not only are you beautiful, you also wore, you know, our color. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's good to be here. Yes. Um, so you, you've heard about, you know, the things that we've said, the, mm -hmm. the little story that we've just read out. Mm -hmm. What is the trend? So let's just start with the trend. What mm -hmm. are you seeing, you know, um, coming from, you know, COVID, mm -hmm. now we're living in the pandemic. What are the trends? Oh, so we're seeing um, from the individual side of things, we're seeing um, a, a huge number of, of um, hacked social media accounts. <laughs> um, this has become a, a trend, especially across WhatsApp um, and Instagram and Facebook. Now, why those platforms, I can easily explain because people could use them, the cyber criminals could use them to solicit ransoms from the owners of those accounts. Remember, people use these platforms for business. So a business owner is, is open to paying any amount to get their account back. Ima just imagine if you built up your business to have up to 50K followers, 10,000, even 1,000 followers, and someone just yanks it off your feet. That's your showcase. That's your marketplace. Mm. And somebody takes it away from you. You can pay any amount. So the ransom um, model is working very well. Hmm. We also know that um, those cyber criminals can use it to scam customers of that small business. So hacked social media accounts is big business for cyber criminals. They have online forums, they are dark web forums that are constantly sharing uh, best practices on how to hack a social media account wow. and stay um, in charge of that account till the owner you know, meets your ransom, meets whatever expectations they have, the cyber criminal has set for the owner. So we're seeing um, a, good no a, a huge number of those um, kind of um, attacks. We're also seeing a lot of um, people fall for um, um, social engineering scams. So basically, uh, what that means is people are deceived into giving their personal information, and that personal information is then used to then um, defraud people. So uh, we're seeing a huge number of those kind of schemes. Um, some of them are tied to important days. So um, recently, for example, it was Mother's Day, there was Women's Day. There are those links that people say, okay, come and win, it. Come and win something, you click on it, and then start playing a game. Some of that is installing harmful, harmful software on the phone. So we're seeing increasingly that we're having banking malware on phones as well. So you'll find that um, um, my friends over at the banks, you scream about you know, the, high, the high rate of 
those kind of infections. And when those malware go in, you're, you're just playing a game. But when those malware go into your phone, they begin to scavenge for your, your bank uh, credentials, your login credentials, your OTP. They begin to scavenge for your bank details and send them off to the hacker. And you find people saying, oh, this one is happening to my bank account and that one is happening. So we're seeing that. And then the ones that actually get called on the phone, oh, palliative, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh um, we are updating our, bank, our banking, uh, banking software, or we are... Um, you know, the BVN is expiring, mm -hmm. or even the current, the, the NIN now, it's also, it's so, you know, it's so, yeah, yeah, it is. So we find that those social media engineering scams are evolving. That's those deception, you know, to gain sensitive information is evolving. As the times are evolving, cyber criminals are evolving, and as these things successful, we're getting the information from customers of banks. So we're seeing that on the individual part of, uh, side of things. For organizations, a different ballgame entirely as well i've spoken about small businesses and just to put it out there small businesses are more at risk of being victims of cyber crime than bigger businesses i mean the banks for example spend a lot a lot of money on their in their security the big businesses they also spend a lot of money but the small businesses they don't really think you know they can be hacked so who's having me is they, you know <laughs> what do i have you know but you have a few you have a few uh nairas and a few dollars they can take you also have information of people that are transacting with you that trust you as well that they can take you know so we we find that for organizations of different sizes the threats that um are prevalent are you know could differ a bit slightly but we find that cyber criminals are becoming more attractive just as normal to anybody who's collecting data mm. and that's why i'm very very um excited about what um, nita is doing you know sort of to protect data anyone who collects data should be responsible for keeping it safe because that data once is breached once you experience a data breach which means an adversary or a cyber criminal has gotten access to your environment and stolen data what they do with that they can sell it on the dark web to get more money the people who buy from them is a whole supply chain so yeah data data. Data. we are not safe <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole you know, supply chain data is currency uh-huh and I mean, when you started talking about mobile phones, I was like, oh, wow, yes. People always think about laptops. We've become used to putting antivirus software on our laptops, laptops. but we all forget our phones. In uh -huh. fact, when you said it now, I thought to myself, yeah. well, I recently changed phones, uh -huh. but did I install antivirus software on my phone? I haven't done it. And so thank you for reminding me. All the things you were saying were very scary. And then when you started to talk about things, you had me till you mentioned <laughs> But your neck was not breaking when you did like No, you had me. You had me. I was following you. I was like, she's making sense. Correct. <laughs> till you said, Nits da. Uh -huh. And I was like, eh, eh. I disagree. So, sorry, Uti. Let me just interrupt that. So for uh -huh. the sake of our audience, please, can you break down the acronym so we also educate? Okay. It's Nigerian Institute of Technology. Um... I can't remember what the other part we of it is. We will confirm. <laughs> yeah, okay. They're the body who are responsible, yeah, they're responsible for, for the, technology. The, uh, the Data Protection yeah. Act, and they're the ones who are responsible for this. Now, mm -hmm. here's my problem with NITA. Okay. They, they, their heart is in the right place, right? I've had several engagements with them. It is imperative that we protect. So somebody needs to be regulating that space, and mm -hmm. they have come into the space. My problem with NITA is, sorry, They've done it in a very she does unimaginative way. I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I'm just uh, not okay. to debunk what she was saying. But personally, they've done it in an unimaginative way. So the NDPR, mm -hmm. that regulation, it's like taking the GDPR. Yes. And just take blot out anywhere. Anywhere, you and then you just yeah. And just put Nigeria. So our, our our issues are unique, geographically unique. So some of these things didn't make sense to me. But let me just even come back. You know, these. WhatsApp, I, I had a group that I'm on, mm -hmm. and somebody was hacked. Mm -hmm. And then these people started calling us one by, by one. one. Wow. I need to understand how profitable this thing is. Because it, it takes a lot for you to sit it does. and call it almost does. 200 people. So, you know, you, you sort of touched on it. But mm -hmm. maybe when people can start to wrap around Naira and Kobo, mm -hmm. it cause an effect. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will help us to think more. Because I've seen that message so many times. Set up two-step authentication. But so many people still haven't. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could just paint a picture for us and people will connect and say, you know what, tonight I'm setting up two-factor. Okay, so there are many angles to look at it from. Um, but I want us to start from the fact that um, you're not just responsible for your own safety online. You're also responsible for the safety of everybody connected to you. Yeah, you exactly. could be the weakest link. Yeah, you could be the weakest link. And remember that we have 
trust here. If I know you and I receive a message from you, I'm most, I'm most likely to act on that message exactly. than if I received it from a, a perfect stranger. Mm -hmm. So now, if you get hurt, the chances of I also getting hurt is also very high. So just think about that ecosystem mm -hmm. that you failing to do the right thing has created for a cyber criminal. That's one. Two, because when I hack one person's WhatsApp, I can begin to receive messages. I can re begin to receive information that I'm not supposed to have access to. It also means that I can provide that information as to I am you mm. when I'm not. Mm. And i give you a context. One of the situations we dealt with was um, a particular person um, got hacked on a group. Then that person started calling other people. So, but when a, mm. when a person calls another person, say, ah, we, we, are, we did this PTA group together now. There's one code that has been sent to your phone. <laughs> so now, because you said we are in PTA group, and yeah. actually we are in a PTA group together, so that code is needed for something. And then that person is open to giving their OTP, which wow. then puts the other person at risk of being hacked. That's one. Wow. Two, we also get people actually extorting other people for money. And yes. you, you're saying some things that get people to pay money. And, and like you said, and I mean, with other security issues you're talking about, once you know that something is booming when it's continuing. Mm. Yeah. That's just, there's, yeah. there's just a plain artificial it's science profitable. around it. It's profitable. So in mm -hmm. 10 people that they try to hit, they will get on to one person and be successful. And that, you know, sits in the, their banks. So it's, it's in the odds are that one person is going to, is going to give them something, something else for, their, for their trouble. Wow. So tell me what... what uh, coming over to you with this revelation, what, what's your take or do you have a question for content? Yes, I have a question. But before I go into that, you know, what she said just reminded me of this experience where somebody called me and he said, hi, hi, is this not, um, is this not Timmy? I said, okay, mm -hmm. is this Timmy? <laughs> Are you, is this Timmy Coppola? I'm the one, you don't know me. I said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> ah, you don't know me again. Okay, okay. And then he goes into how that, you know, there's a contract now. He's about to give it to me right now. You know, and I should be fast. I should send something to this call for so number. And you know the way they act as though everything needs to be done. In yes, now, no, 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 no. You know, that now, now, before you have the opportunity to check with other people. But, you know, I didn't fall for it. Unfortunately, a lot of people have, a lot of people have, you know, fallen for such. So I know that, you know, yesterday was the World Password Day, and there was this thing that was trending, the hashtag layer up, right? So I was just hoping that you could just shed some light on how important the World Password mm. is. And mm. um, just generally, like, there's such a, uh, so much about having a good password and how important it is, because I think it's like the key that opens a lot. I was hoping you could shed some light on that. Tell me, you just hit the nail on the head on, 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 from many angles, actually. And I want to say, I, I shared a video um, yesterday as well. It's a research we did um, on the streets of Lagos. I took my team with a camera on the streets of Lagos and I attempted to get uh, people to give me their passwords. I want people at home to guess the percentage of success we had. We had 80% people give us no the password. No way! And you know, we, we started seeing, and we, we confirmed some of the wow. things we knew from that research. One, people use the same passwords across multiple platforms. That means if I hack your Facebook, I most likely have um, the password for your Netflix, for your Twitter, for your WhatsApp, for your email. And from your email, I can do a lot more as, as well. I have the password for your bank as well. People share, people use one password everywhere. People also don't have two factor authentication um, set up. And we saw that as well. So, for example, what two-factor is, is you have a door. Most people have doors, right? No, pe most people have windows. But most people that have windows have burglar proofs as well. Yes. Why do you have a burglar proof? You have a burglar proof because just in case you, you get boggled or someone yeah. attempts to boggle you, to it, it, it takes a person a lot more to get in. And in trying to get in, they might, you know, people around me alert the police. So it's harder to get access. It's not impregnable, but it's harder to get access. And that's what two-step verification does. And that's what layering she was talking about, um, Timmy was talking about there. It's very important. We also saw in that research that people don't understand privacy as well. So one guy gave us his password. I was like, well, ah, that password is, is not strong. It's weak. The guy was like, oh, but I'm not giving it to anybody now. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> If you get a message, oh you're going to watch that video and you'll laugh. Everybody's laughing about that word. And the guy said that. The next thing we notice also as well is that people, people have very weak passwords. A strong password is a password that is not less than eight characters long. It should consist of upper and lowercase characters. It should be unique per online platform. It should contain numbers and it should contain characters. characters. 
Now, that's difficult to have per platform. But we have something called password managers that can help people remember your password. So you only have to remember one master password. The rest is securely stored for you. That's a better way, a better practice of managing your passwords. So passwords are gatekeepers. I mean, hmm. will you get a drunk to, <laughs> to man your gate? But I want to know before you, will you show before up? we go, please let us go for a break. Because this is a deep revelation. I'm going to look you at myself. Am I secure? One question. Please, you will ask it when we come back. I don't know if you're getting as much information as I am, but we'll see you shortly after the break. Thank you.